It's been a long week. Have you ever wondered what mental damage would be obtained by a 23 year old man watching 9 puppet based movies in a row? If I was to describe how this last week has felt, I'd compare it to falling over and grazing my knee, but instead of letting it heal, every day I've peeled off the scab and now I'm left with a big hole in it and possibly an infection. Jokes aside, I've actually found some real treasures within this collection of movies that I wouldn't have thought about watching otherwise unless I'd physically forced myself to do so for a video. So there's nine different movies I'm going to talk about today and I'll do them in order, from worst to best. The range of movies were released between the first movie in 1979 and the latest in 2014 and there's a gigantic difference in quality throughout. I'll also state that there's two movies I've excluded from my list, them being Kermit's Swamp Years as that was a Kermit central movie and didn't feature the rest of the Muppets as a whole sort of group. And it's a very Muppet Christmas movie and that's because I couldn't acquire it illegally and I wasn't going to pay $7.99 to rent it on Amazon Prime. So I guess we better get started with our list starting at number 9. I guess it would be good to put in a disclaimer now. I will be talking about the plots of all these movies so if you want to watch any of them in the future I'd click off now. Plus there's, I guess this counts as a review. So it's worth saying these are my opinion. Enjoy. The Muppets Wizard of Oz. Oh boy, oh dear. This is, as you've guessed, the Muppets rendition of the Hollywood classic, The Wizard of Oz. So I guess you could say the plot's safe. It's a story told a million times and the structure's never changed. So it should be a good movie, right? Well, well, no. I, I think the familiarity of the plot somehow makes the movie that's already boring even more boring. The charm behind the Muppets for me is the nature of the comedy, how it's meta, smart and often bizarre. You don't get that here. It's got a strange amount of sexual jokes mixed in with stoner comedy being spouted from Pepe the King Prawn and it's just, well it's not, it's not funny at like any moment. For some reason this movie feels a lot longer than an hour and 40 minutes. There's early 2000s references to Napster and MTV Cribs, which are obviously dated now, but I bet they even felt shoehorned in at the time. There's also this bizarre Quentin Tarantino cameo. They use CGI as well, which is generally intolerable and horribly dated. I just think if you're going to, um, if you're given the chance, give them up its Wizard of Oz a miss. There's eight other movies that are much better. I'm feeling a light 0.5 Kermits out of five Kermits on this one. The Muppets from Space is a Gonzo, who is a fan favourite Muppet centric movie. And even here at number 8, it's it's a good movie. Each Muppet is based on an animal except Gonzo, and this movie is based on his feelings of loneliness because he doesn't have a family and he's unsure about his identity. Gonzo's family in space get in touch with him, and the plot is based around connecting with them while the government attempts to interfere. This is actually quite a heavy plot for a Muppets movie where usually you'll find that the plot is mainly used as an excuse to string together a series of skits and gags. You've actually got a basis for a movie here. There's like a lot of good moments in this movie. There's this entertaining subplot where Rizzo the Rat ends up in a testing lab that mimics a jail and for some reason really odd as a... really odd is that how you say it? It's a funky 99 space romp and I honestly can't find too many problems with it at all. I guess in general there's a disdain for the human actors within the film, but it's not something that bothers me really too much. I guess if I was going to throw out my major criticisms, I'd say I could have done with some original songs, something that the other movies do so well. It also feels more like a straight to DVD movie than a feature film, but that's not always a bad thing. But overall yeah, I'd say not too na like mind numbingly awful at all, as some people would make it seem. I'm feeling a strong 2.3 Kermit out of 5 for Muppets in Space. The Muppets Most Wanted is the latest movie in the Muppets franchise. Released in 2014, it didn't do as well as other Disney projects perform at the box office, so it's hard to see them being in any hurry to make the next instalment, even now in 2020. It's a direct follow-on to the 2011 Muppets reboot movie, The Muppets, and all in all, it's a, it's a decent movie. Ricky Gervais is over-implemented into the story from the start, 
which I feel is a massive turn-off for some people. Ricky Gervais is a very Marmite character in general. People either love him or they hate him, so I feel like it's a strange choice to have him as your main guest star in the movie. The story is based around the Muppets going on a world tour, while Ricky Gervais and Evil Kermit from the Evil Kermit memes use this as a cover to rob museums along the way. There's also this side plot where Kermit gets sent to the Gulag, no joke, and for some reason Ray Liotta's there. At first I didn't enjoy this because it felt strange to have Kermit detached from the rest of the gang, when usually the entire chemistry of the Muppets is based around everyone's interactions with him, but in general I think it led to a funny and whimsical storyline. Ty Burrell from Modern Family is also in this movie, in my favourite subplot, being an Interpol detective who has worked alongside Sam the Eagle to catch Ricky Gervais and Evil Kermit. That part is honestly, truly, very funny. Ty Burrell seems like someone who radiates a natural, wholesome energy that seems to work so well within the Muppet sphere. I feel this movie is made with care and it isn't a simple sequel movie made to cash in on the franchise, which is obviously a good thing because once again, this movie did not make that much money. I'm feeling a, like a light 2.5 Kermit out of 5 for the latest Muppets Bonanza. Muppets Treasure Island is the second movie the Muppets made based off a historically significant classic novel after the Muppets Christmas Carol. There's a lot to unpack here in this movie. Despite it having many flaws, it also has like a lot going for it. And I guess overall having an eventful journey is much more enjoyable than just having a journey. Jim Hawkins is played by Kevin Bishop and is the main focal point of the story. Using a human as the main character never feels quite right within a Muppets movie, but they bypass bypass why can't I say that word? But they bypass this by having Gonzo and Rizzo play new characters built in just for this adaption. They play the best friends of Jim Hawkins and share the limelight up front. The story and plot works the same as the story and plot from Treasure Island always has. So you know it's it's a good story. Oh wait, yeah, did I also mention Tim Curry's in this movie? Tim Curry is in this movie and he is, he is very good in this movie. The role of Long John Silver is a complex and conflicted character in pretty much every adaption to date, battling between being a ruthless pirate out for his own needs and his newfound duties which have came with being fond of Jim Hawkins. I think the main thing that let me down with this adaption is how he straight up tells Jim Hawkins that he likes him, making the whole internal conflict situation like less intriguing. But then I remember I'm watching a Muppets movie, so why am I trying to psychoanalyze the characters? I think, however, this is a side effect of the Muppets playing second fiddle to a human partnership at the front of this feature. The songs are good, the jokes are good, and the performances are good. It's just not quite enough Muppet charm to make it great. I'm giving Muppets Treasure Island 2.7 Kermits out of 5. The Muppets Christmas Carol. Yeah, yeah, put down your pitchforks. I, I do love this movie. I imagine for a lot of people, this is by far their favourite Muppets movie. A well-crafted Christmas story with a lot of heart and emotion. But these people haven't watched 20 hours of Muppets in the past four days. The Muppets Christmas Carol is an important part of my childhood. If you asked me who little Timmy was, I'd tell you he was a frog on crutches. The Muppets Christmas Carol is a fantastic Christmas movie. But it's not so much a Muppets one. Much like Treasure Island, this is based off a novel and a well-loved and well-told story. Michael Caine plays the lead character and, as always, he does a superb job. Much like Treasure Island, once again, Gonzo and Rizzo are utilised to share the screen time between a human lead and some of the Muppets. This time, however, Gonzo is playing Charles Dickens, the author of the story and the narrator of the movie. As well as the main characters being human, the ghosts of Christmas past, present and yet to come are not established Muppets characters, they're portrayed by almost human-like puppets. It's a really, really good movie and I do truly love it. Come Christmas time, I'm willing to come back and give it a re-review as a standalone movie. And when I'm feeling more Christmassy, I might I might be a bit more um, generous. But um, for now, I'm feeling three Kermit out of five and I'll just take the backlash on the chin. For Muppets 2011, this movie is top tier. All the films from here on out are I love The Muppets 2011. It's a soft reboot of the original and it's built with so much love. There's a new Muppet in town called Walter and he lives with his brother Jason Se I mean Gary, who's played by Jason Segal. They live somewhere called Small Town, which is, which is funny. The, the movie is just funny. It never at any point takes itself too seriously. It's just full of meta and surrealistic abstract humour that scores on every level. Walter is the biggest fan of The Muppets 
himself being a puppet and wanting to find somewhere to fit in. When he gets the chance to go to the Muppet studio for a tour, he finds out Tex Richman, an oil tycoon, is going to acquire the plot and destroy it to mine oil. When Walter informs Kermit the Frog of the situation, the plot starts to become about the Muppets getting the gang back together to raise the funds to buy the studio back. This paper thin plot is basically just used as a device to allow the writers to string together whichever and whatever nonsense they want to and it's, it's brilliant. Sometimes the jokes fall flat but sometimes they're so genius I couldn't believe what I was watching. There's this scene that straight up stole from the Mitchell and Webb look where the, some of the characters realise they're the bad guys but I'm just going to let it off with it. If you get the chance I'd recommend throwing this movie on and you'll realise exactly what the charm is behind the Muppets franchise. I'm giving the Muppets 2011 a whopping 4 Kermits out of 5. Here we go, the big final three. The Great Muppet Caper is a banger. The follow up movie to the original movie, it follows a plot of someone stealing diamonds and then framing the, um, the theft on Miss Piggy, while Kermit and Fozzie Bear, who are identical twins in this movie, are now working for a newspaper and trying to capture a story. It's, it's not much of a plot, but god damn it, the movie is just so funny. And that's what it, I, I'm looking for in a Muppets movie, more than a plot. I'm looking for some strong one-liners and there's just this general feeling of surreal escapism throughout. The world of the Muppets is just so peculiar and bizarre that the antics don't need to make sense to be entertaining. And these early movies just build the feeling and setting so perfectly, it's so hard not to enjoy them from start to finish. I think the part of the Muppet charm is how they're, they're all so useless and ignorant and rely on Kermit for grounded advice, despite him also just being a frog. There's this scene where Gonzo overhears a plot point that is vital to move the story along, and the reason why he wasn't seen was because he was under the table, um, taking photos for an article he was writing about people's knees. It's this whimsical charm I find hilarious about these movies. In any other movie, this would have been lazy writing, but the Muppets are so self-aware of the writing, it becomes part of the entertainment. This movie for me is fantastic. I'm giving The Great Muppet Caper a 4.5 Kermit out of 5 with absolutely no regrets. Oh boy, number 2, eh? I don't know where to start with this one. The Muppets Take Manhattan is its strange. It's actually ab absurd. The, the Muppets have graduated college, the uh, question mark, and they decided they're going to move to Manhattan to make it on Broadway. I know this is going to make me sound boring, but Kermit is he's clearly the best Muppet character. And this movie is Kermit's movie. When things don't turn out for the Muppets in Manhattan, they all leave separate ways. But Kermit stays with the dream of selling his screenplay. He starts working in a diner and strikes up a friendship with the waitress there who wants to be a fashion designer. In many ways, this movie feels like it was directed by Woody Allen if Woody Allen really liked puppets. I think the strange thing about this movie is how I've spent the whole video banging on about how you don't need a plot to make a good movie, but the plot makes this such a good movie. The skits in this movie are so ingenious and there's this whole subplot where Kermit loses his memory from getting hit by a taxi and it seems like such a pointless and frustrating obstacle to the climax, but it just leads to some of the funniest and strangest scenes. I, I forgive it. I don't know if this movie is as great as I think it is, or if I just love the strange humour that doesn't really make sense. This movie really doesn't put a foot wrong for me. There's always also this chance that none of these movies are any good and I've just been brainwashed by the sheer volume I've been forcing into my brain. But nonetheless, The Muppets Takes Manhattan scores 4.7 Kermits out of 5 from me. And at the top of our list is The Muppets Movie, the original. The reason I decided to make this video. One day I sat down and bought Disney Plus and as soon as I booted it up and watched all the obscure old cartoons from the 1940s that I could, I realised I absolutely had no intention of watching literally anything on it until I, I seen the Muppets movie. Unlike everything else on there, uh, I, I hadn't already watched it an absurd amount of times. I'd never seen the Muppets movie, so I, I put it on. Then a couple of minutes into the movie, someone made a joke and I, I laughed. Then another one and I laughed again. I kept thinking to myself, no way is this movie actually this good, but it, it was. The Muppets movie made me laugh the entire way through and I was sat with glisten of awe over my eyes, with utter disbelief at what I was watching. It was so meta. There's scenes where they literally read the script 
they're all making jokes and so many of them are just hilarious and just so daft which is what I enjoy this movie is very much a god damn it I'm in building a team movie like the Avengers or Seven Samurai but neither of them have jokes as good as this one the music as well is absolutely fantastic Rainbow Connection is such a good song this film is just a hit with me throughout and lo and behold once the movie was over Disney Plus was like you might want to watch and suggested this wide range of different Disney movies and all I could think was yeah <laughs> I do want to watch them therefore from there on out I decided I'd watch every Muppets movie and rank them in a video and that I did the original Muppets movie gets five Kermits out of five from me so that concludes this video I'm going to go watch a movie without puppets in it now good night